see you in a few days. I cannot emphasize to you forcibly enough how much trouble Britain is in right now in the light of this morning's High Court ruling that now requires parliamentary approval for the invocation of Article 50. Article 50 is a red herring designed to give the government time to fend off trade deals from friendly countries, destroy investor confidence, and create a degree of uncertainty that the government thinks will give it justification to erode the people's confidence in their decision. We know what the establishment is up to, and we need to become stronger than we have ever been before. I do not believe we will do that by pandering to the media or by changing the image of UKIP so that we make ourselves acceptable to the political class. Nor do I believe we can do this by aping said establishment. It is our core belief as a party and a core principle of British democracy that government and parliament may only rule by consent. It is my belief that our party must also embody this principle. I have set out a plan to democratise the party by implementing a comprehensive system of reform, radical reform, which will replace the current system with a system of internal direct democracy. If this doesn't happen, then frankly, it doesn't make any difference who you vote for. You're probably then looking at the future party leader and the future deputy leader sitting right beside me right now. And under these fine, thoroughly well-meaning people, it's going to be business as usual. And with business as usual, what you're going to get is a continuation of what we have now, a London-centric party that dictates from the top down, a party where none of us has any voice or influence unless we live in the capital and are friendly with the party hierarchy. But under the system that I will implement if I am elected leader, Every single member of the party will have a voice and a reason to recruit new members. And most importantly, we will have the most legitimate and democratic mandate of any political party in Britain. I wish I had the freedom to say more. But after Monday's debate, when I respectfully questioned what I deemed to be the rather un UKIP political philosophy of one of the other candidates, I was cautioned by a party official and told that there had been several complaints made against me and that what the party needed now was unity. I disagree. What the party needs now is robust debate about its future, not unity merely for unity's sake. I realise that I am blessed not to need to make a penny out of being in politics, and I fully respect that many others in the party have to think very carefully about how they're going to pay their mortgages in the light of the fact that in two years' time, most of them are going to be out of a job. Unless, of course, Brexit doesn't happen after all. And so, I really don't want to rock the boat. I know that the party officials want a quiet, decorous coronation. And since my conscience simply will not allow me to join in the ruse and shout out all the usual rousing platitudes while pretending that everything is fine and nothing needs to be fixed, I have made the decision that I will instead embark on my own campaign, travelling the width and breadth of the country to engage with normal members. It is these people that matter. Their vote is the only endorsement I seek. These candidates are thoroughly decent and well-meaning people, as I trust you will agree. But Brexit has shown us what can happen when the people take charge, when new technologies are used to give people a voice, when the establishment no longer dictates the debate. Nigel Farage has left us a fantastic legacy. It's a legacy I wish to take to the next level in making UKIP a party powered by the people. 
I am leaving the building now, but I wish my opponents the best of luck and look forward to meeting as many members as possible as I tour our great country. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.